So we are now recording. It's May 16th. And what I wanted to talk about today was, um, you know, we, we, we've done a little bit of Sanskrit chanting. Um, you know, I, I chant Om sometimes when we have our sessions, just to sort of open up the space and to connect with that cosmic energy. And what I wanted to do today was talk a little bit more about the chakras. Um, so let's just go ahead and look at this. This is um, an exercise that I've learned. So uh, you can hopefully everyone can see the slides that I have up. This is Bija Mantras of the Chakras. Now it looks like I wrote Kakras. <laughs> um, this is intentional. Uh, I've been taught that, you know, whenever, whenever I'm teaching in Sanskrit, that it's appropriate to use the correct English transliteration. And so Chuck actually is written as C-A, but it's pronounced as Cha. So Chakras is the actual word. And the Bijas themselves, Bijas are like mantras. So my mantras are, um, the word mantra comes from two syllables in Sanskrit. First is manas, which is the mind. And tra is the same derivative that we use in English to traverse. So literally, we are traversing the mind, which is kind of the goal of yoga um, to cross over uh, that field of mind and mental disturbance. And so bijas are actual sounds that are in Sanskrit. Their bija actually means seed. Okay. And um, what happens is that, you know, we have a lot of uh, interpretations of how the chakras function. And, you know, there's been a lot of uh, derivative information that has come out of that. Uh, this information has been taught to me by some of my teachers. And so what we're doing is we're taking the sound energy and we're going to be installing it in certain sections of the body. None of the Everyone here knows about the chakras, right? I don't think this is anything new. Um, so my first question is, has anyone seen uh, either this type of banner or, you know, this type of banner or even this type of yoga poster? Um, you know, we had, we have a beautiful mural at uh, Luminous Energetic Pathways Sacred Center in Burlington. So, you know, some of you who have physically been there will have seen this, but has anyone has anyone not seen this sound, this, these symbols before? Okay. Um, this is actually, when we're looking at this, um, the chakras themselves are said to have a varying number of petals, of colors, of frequency, and um, actual sound as well. And if you notice here, within each of these, this is the root chakra, the, the muladhara, this is the the sacral center uh, chakra, which is the Svadhisthana. This is the Manipura, which is the navel. This is the heart. And so these, this is actually Sanskrit alphabet. Um, so what's being shown here is actually seed sounds that you can install within. Um, and they're, they contain elemental energies. And it's like, um, you know, when you're tuning your, your instrument, um, this is a divine way to tune that subtle instrument of your body that you can bring in that divine energy through the connection with sound. Um, you'll see that, you know, the higher chakras do have Om, and then the, the, the top chakra at the head, the Sahasrara, the crown chakra actually has another sound, which will go into that as well. Um, so you can see here, this is, these are the, these are the chakras. We talked, uh, the Sanskrit name Muladhara, Svadhisthana, Manipura, Anahata, Vishuddha, Agnya, and Sahasrara. And again, uh, in English, these are the root, sacral, lumbar, heart, throat, third eye, and thousand petal lotus or crown chakra at the top. Um, these can be found, for those of you who don't know exactly where the, the chakras are, um, the more you meditate upon them, the more the chakras will, you'll begin to establish a connection to where the physiological corresponding spot is but um, let's just go through it again. Uh, so the, the, the root chakra is at the base of the spine, coccygeal region. The Svadhisthana is connected to the sex center. Um, Manipura is at the navel. 
uh, anahata, the heart chakra is located right here, right at the center of the chest. Uh, Vishuddha is the throat chakra, um, maybe just slightly below the throat, uh, connected to the thyroid gland actually uh, on a physiological level. And then Ajna is actually, um, it's the midpoint of the eyebrows, but it's actually, if you take your fingers and you make, like take two fingers, it's actually two finger widths above, like if you want to be really specific. Those of you who have studied Marma, I know Eleanor, I think you've studied Marma with me uh, before, Th this is corresponding to that Marma point. And, um, and then the Sahasrara, the anterior fontanelle. So there's kind of like the sunken depression. Um, and then if you go just sort of like a little bit above, like there's like an apex right above that area and that's where the Sahasrara is located. Um, and then these are all connected to elemental energies. Uh, they're connected to our senses, our sense organs. So, and, and our motor organs as well. Um, respectively, the earth, water, fire, air, uh, space, mind, and consciousness. I won't necessarily get into the other stuff because this is more, that gets into a uh, different conversation, but um, everything has a corresponding sound as well. Now, before we get into the sounds, um, there's actually two sounds that we need to kind of get down a little bit in Sanskrit. This is just a primer. You don't need to know how to, you know, speak Sanskrit properly, but there's two, in the vowels, there are two types of A's in Sanskrit. There's the short A, which has nothing on top, and then there's the one that has the little line on the top. And the only difference between the two is that, like, if you say, ah, uh, and then you increase the meter to two. That's the short A, but then you increase the long one. Ah, that's actually the long A. So you'll notice that there's a slightly different sound if you say it. Ah, ah. The ah, the, the short A actually has a ah, uh, like it's more like kind of like a ah. Uh, and then ah uh is like a long ah, uh, like aspirated sound. So ah, uh, ah. Uh, and then when we're chanting these, we use uh, the short, okay? So like these sounds, lum, vum, it's almost like a L-U-M, even though it's an A. So I just wanna make sure that you guys get that sound. So you can practice ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit. We're gonna be sticking with the ah, uh, okay? And then in these bijas, there's the sound um. Mm. When we say om, Om. We're actually making the M sound, which is more of the front. But what I want you to do when you make that M mm sound, I want you to take your tongue and just touch the top of your palate. And as you do that, mm, I want you to try to vibrate your head, particularly your third eye, if you can consciously do that. Mm, om. It's a different experience when you when you get the sound properly. Okay, and again, if you don't get these sounds perfect, it's okay. You don't need, they don't need to be perfect. This is just, Sanskrit is a very um, divine language <laughs> that stimulates different parts of the brain and allows you to um, tap into that energy. Okay, and I mentioned this before, I sort of alluded to it, but just to reiterate, the primary point is that the mantras are associated uh, with those sounds. They're not, the sounds don't belong to the chakras themselves, but rather to the elements. So, you know, earth goes to the coccygeal uh, area, water goes to the sacral area, fire goes to the navel center, air, space, and then these two are actually beyond, uh, you know, the physical realm, they sort of transcend over into the spiritual realm. Um, so the way that we do this is we take each sound and you meditate on the chakra. Okay. So like, let's say, for example, I, uh, am going to do the, uh, the root chakra, which has a sound of lum. What I want to do is I want to meditate and put my awareness in that chakra center. I'm taking my mind, my attention, just as we do in Yoga Nidra and we, you know, use rotational awareness. I want you to take your awareness and put it at the base of the spine 
in the coccygeal area. And just take a few moments to connect. And then what you want to do is take a deep breath in. And when you exhale, you exhale to the sound of lum. 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 And through your awareness and your consciousness, you're trying to take that sound and install it at that point. And then we go to the next chakra uh, and so forth and so forth. And we, we go all the way up to the top. Um, so if you guys want to humor me, we can go ahead and give it a, give it a shot. Okay. So the Muladhara, the root chakra is the sound of lum. And again, you're, you're taking that tongue and just kind of touching the tip and, and vibrating your head. So let's just meditate. Take a few moments. Just to connect. Subtle energy of the body through the spine. And I'd like to you to take all of your awareness and place it at the base of the spine. Feeling that connection. Feeling grounded. When you're ready, what we'll do is we'll take a deep breath in and we'll exhale to the sound of lum. 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 And then just when you're ready, you can just let go of the chant and just feel the difference in that sensation after you vibrated that energy at the base of the spine. Now we're going to shift our awareness up to the sacral center. This is, this may be four or five inches above the, uh, the, the coccygeal center. Feel the connection to the water element. And we're going to do the same, but we're going to exhale to the sound of vam. 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 Just feel the difference in the shift energetically as that sound connects to the chakra. And now moving up to the part of the spine that's connected to the next chakra, just opposite the navel, connecting to the spine. 
the r sound, the r sound, has a fiery aspect to it in Sanskrit, and so it's connected to the fire element. So we're going to be taking that sound of ram. 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 You may even feel heat increasing a little bit, whether that's subtle or subtle or a physical sensation. That sound is connected to that fire element. Um, and now bring all of your awareness and attention to the heart center. Feeling the connection to the air element and the sound for this one is yum. So we'll try it. Yum. 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 Actually feel feel that sensation of loving someone or being in love or just feeling divine love, um, it will increase as you focus more on that energy and awareness with that sound and connect that sound to the heart center. And the next is the throat chakra, the Vishuddha chakra. And this sound is hum. Just put all your attention and awareness there and through the sound and the vibration, you want to direct that energy to the throat chakra. Hum. 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 Um, 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 um. 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 ready, bring the attention up to the third eye, the Anya Chakra. And this one you already know, it's Om. Om.
Now we take our awareness and attention to the top uppermost part, just above the depression in the head, the crown chakra, the sahasrara chakra. This sound is also om, but it's a different om. There are there is more of an emphasis on the A and the U, so it's more um so you're actually making the separate sounds of the A and the U. Um, so let's take a deep breath in and try. Um, Now, you can begin to feel the difference um, as you circulate your awareness, just through the act of circulating the awareness, projecting it to the different areas of the spine and taking the sound and projecting it to different areas of the spine through your consciousness. The practice is that the elements are now in the proper place and that awareness is expanding. Generally speaking, one can start, depending on where one is feeling, if one is already feeling a lot of energy up here uh, and needs to be more grounded, you can, you can spend more time in the lower chakras. Um, you know, sometimes we believe in spirituality or at least in the view of yoga philosophy, there's a lot of yogis who believe we just want to raise our awareness to the top and keep it there. But when one does this, one becomes very ungrounded. Um, real spirituality, according to me anyway, and, and what I've been taught through my teachers, is that we want to have a balanced approach to life. So we want to have all the elements in the right place in a balanced proportion. Um, for everyone, what balance is, is going to be a little bit different. And so you need to intuitively decide where you need to guide your, your, uh, your awareness. Of course, when we're meditating, we're raising our awareness naturally. And so it's important to spend time up here, but we also need to, you know, come down every now and then take care of, you know, everything sort of below. Um, and so this is a practice that you can do on a regular basis. And this is why I'm recording it. Um, just so that, you know, I can put it up on Facebook and if you guys want to go back and, and, and see the sounds and see the, the images of the chakras, you'll have the ability to do that. So I will, um, take this recording and throw it on YouTube and I'll, I'll put it on the Facebook page. I'll put it on the Luminous page as well. So you guys can see it. Um, I, in, in closing, I wanted to say thank you. And not just thank you, but namaste. Now, namaste has become a catchphrase or keyword in the yoga community and in the spiritual community at large, but um, we mustn't forget that namaste actually has a deeper meaning. So nama is salutation. A lot of the mantras that you hear, om namah shivaya, like, so salutation. It also means to bow. So nama salutation, and through... Uh, in Sanskrit, the rule is we would add an S if we're adding another uh, consonant, so namas, and then te means to you. And the idea is that that divine energy that is in me uh, acknowledges and bows and sees the energy in each one of you. And of course that, you know, you know we, we just learn to recognize the divine in everything that we, you know, see and do. Um, typically what you'll also see is that people will hold their hands, they'll take their, their hands in a, what's called Anjali Mudra, they'll take their hands and press them against their heart. Um, sometimes the people that are feeling really inclined or devotional, they'll take their hands and they'll press them against their third eye, the thumbs will press against the third eye, 
and then they'll bring it down to the heart and say namaste. This is the this is typically what you'll see. And in the realm of social distancing, this is the perfect way to salute someone. You don't need to hug them. You just a, a, acknowledge their the beauty and the divine light within them, and you just take your thumbs, press them against your head, heart namaste. So a loving namaste to you all, and I thank you very much for joining me and humoring me in this practice. Um, I hope it's been helpful. What I'm going to do is stop the recording now.